come. I would like to thank um, for this kind invitation to be here is uh, uh, honorable. Um, I will start my presentation. talk about new designs in old environments. In short, we can say new in old. And uh, I would like to talk about what is the role of these new designs in historical environments and then uh, a quick touch to what city of Nicosia <coughs> historic city. First of all, uh, the general word Old. We can use it instead of historical cities, historical settings, historical environments, or historic or historical urban environments. As a terminology for old, we can use these words. We can meet with these words in literature. For historical cities, they are like living organisms, which experience birth, growth, maturity, uh, decline, decay, and rebirth. They change and develop. They have historical layering of human, human interventions. Uh, historical environments are the expression of accumulations according to the year, reflection of social, cultural, physical, uh, political, and economic structures. Again, historical urban environment, environments are the most important evidence of the past lifestyle, including all tangible and intangible values. Conservation of historical environment as a cultural heritage is an important issue for architectural discipline. It is aimed to preserve, protect, and uh, conserve the historical environment. For new, instead of new, sometimes we meet with uh, all these words in literature. New designs, new constructions, contemporary architecture, modern architecture, new architecture, new architectural interventions, or new buildings. The integration of new architecture into the historical environments is one of the most commonly discussed and difficult issue faced by architects designers in conservation field. It is an important topic of international interest. New buildings in all settings is common to all ages. As we said, historical uh, environments are formed with layers of different cultures. Uh, I would like to give an expression from Ms. Van der Rohe. He said, Forum cannot be given to the past or the future, but only to the present, because present will be past in the future. Uh, I prefer to start with some questions to these new issues in old environments. Do we need new designs in historical environments or not? Shall do we uh, have we have to do, design them or not. Are new designs in historical environments an urban conservation problem <coughs> or an opportunity? Are new designs changing the character and identity of the environment or they have uh, power to provide preservation? Are new designs causing deteriorations or they have power to heal, destroy environments? We can ask these questions and try to find answers within the presentation. New designs in a historical environment is an urban conservation program that forms out a methodology of analyzing and evaluating the existing built fabric with a technological study, making an interpretation of it, commenting on the legal regulations and introducing <coughs> principles that are based on the synthesis of the past and today for, for providing historical continuity and preserving urban identity 
despite the continuous change. Uh, I will give some information about the term that we meet as term as new designs that identify in the international uh, conservation policy documents like charters, declarations or recommendations within the uh, discussed in symposiums or conferences. Uh, the first one is Athens Charter that has first to introduce conservation at the environmental scale, but focusing around the manners. This regarding the urban architectural aspects of the fabrics in 1931. But this meeting was the first meeting subject to the new designs, restricted taking into consideration the character of their surroundings. In ECOMOS 67, uh, in the first symposium of ECOMOS, uh, keeping the vitality of the historical tissues is declared as the basic goal of the conservation. It was the first time an intention or of connecting the historical setting with modern setting. Uh, it, it is identified that, it is defined that these settlements should be integral part of the urban and economic developments. Within the content of the symposium, the necessity of introducing some obligations for the near designs in ancient settings is declared. In Brussels meetings, 69, it's the first time that the term integrated conservation started to be discussed in an international conservation platform. In Budapest Symposium, international documents regarding the preservation of cultural and national heritage may be accepted the first platform, the problem of new design in historical setting is discussed in a detailed way. In this symposium, Historical settings are defined as the frameworks of the future developments of the city. In the year 75, European Architectural Heritage Year, the Congress arranged by the Council of Europe in Amsterdam, it is put forward that near buildings built arbitrarily are treats for the heritage, for the historical settings. The model integrated conservation is preferred in which conservation of the historical tissues is achieved by the considering of economical, social, administrative, and legislative <coughs> properties of this situation. Amsterdam meeting may be said as the first meeting in which urban conservation studies were discussed both in terms of the conservation of the existing historical real property and the new buildings to be introduced. Uh, now I want to mention about the uh, design approaches or criteria or terminologies that identify the conservation policy documents uh, to find the answer how we can design our new buildings in historical environment. In Venice chapter, chapter uh, 64, uh, I put under three points what is mentioned there. New buildings are declared as the heating <coughs> processes which destroy homogeneity of the historical areas. Secondly, any extra work which is indispensable must be district from the architectural composition and must be a contemporary stamp. Contemporary architecture must reflect the spirit, spirit of its time. It continues, uh, the replacement of missing parts must integrate harmoniously with the wall, but at the same time must be distinguishable from the original. New work may be distinct from the original composition while still of harmonizing with that composition. A contemporary stamp may be provided in a number of ways, including interpretive information or identifying marks or characters. It is not necessary to create 
juxtaposition, which may violate the mandate to preserve the traditional setting or the relation of mass and God. In Ecomos 72, uh, I will not read all, but the underlying parts, imitations should be avoided is mentioned there. In 75, uh, it is recommended that respect to the relationship near and old. In 72, uh, it is mentioned that use of traditional building materials and techniques are required, and but in a way to reflect its current times. Modern architecture making conscious use of present day techniques must respect the structural, aesthetic, historical, and social qualities of its own surroundings and may, may be sensitive to the local vernacular. We may be word sensitive. Uh, in UNESCO meetings, 76, we meet this description. The harmony of Hyatt colors, materials, and forums constants in the way the facades and roofs are built. The relationship between the volume of buildings and the spatial volume, as well as their average proportions and their uh, position. In UNESCO 2011, in that document, uh, the historic city identified as both a treat and an, and an opportunity. It advocates for an approach that allows and supports the development and adaptation to meet new needs and improve quality of life for the local heritage. In the Charter Krakow 2000, again, the existing city should be respected uh, in terms of layout, massing, and distinctive character. Uh, characteristics. Again, the respect word is the term that we will take in. It is important to understand the character of landscapes and harmonize relevant territorial functions with essential values. In World Heritage Documents 2005, balance between new and old, uh, the new interventions should add cultural values continuity of culture and creation of a city's identity, the uh, responsibility of new designs to create city's identity is <coughs> In rural char charter, we again meet with these words for new designs that new works should respect uh, and readily identify. I try to collect all the terminology that we meet in uh, this conservation, international conservation policies, like charters uh, and all other documents. We meet the term respectful, readily identifiable, harmoniously integrated, sensitive, uh, compatible, distinguished. It says us that the new design should be like that, or should reflect spirit of its time, maintain visual continuity, and should not pretend to be history, copy the old, lie to us as it is historical uh, building, and deceive us. But all these words are open-ended uh, terms. The question how we will evaluate and create a design to be respectful is uh, the answer that all professionals try to find. Within the literature, uh, I try to summarize the list for different design approaches. There are many uh, different uh, documents. I put three of them here. Dear Professor Chidan Baitin Hoca from Yildiz Technical University. She is uh, my professor that meets me with that subject, new and old. Uh, I, I first saw her thesis, PhD thesis, and 
follow this subject to search. She uh, categorized these approaches into three main topics. The first one is style-oriented approach. Uh, and under this topic, there are two subtopics as neo-vernacularism or historicism. We can follow this approach as a design. Or contextualist approach. It could be the first one, contextualism, that could be in three ways, like designing same as the historical or an association, designing new in a way that to recall and tell the historical, <coughs> or contrast with the historical historical buildings. The second one is spatialist approach to read the spaces of historical buildings and try to reflect them in new design or ecological approach. The third one is formalistic that are described in charters or guidelines that you are going to uh, create your design. Second list is from Michael Fayes. Uh, he collects them into five topics. The first one is pastiche. What is pastiche approach? Is where a building or extension is created as an historical essay based upon academic learning. You mentioned that if you don't have any academic profession, it is a little bit dangerous to use this pastiche this approach. Uh, traditional approach, the second one, is probably the most common and is arguable that which has watered down components lifted from the past. It could also represent the modern vernacular. The third one is subtile approach that requires a light and depth touch pays the most respect to its historical context and often adopted where a quite gentle approach is appropriate. One which allows the historic environment to speak loudest. Modern approach provides an unambiguous building clearly of its time, drawing its inspiration from the past and respectful of its historical and the last one is arrogant approach, which is immensely confident and pays little regard to its historical context. For this to succeed requires the most skillful designer. Many people could find this unacceptable. And the last list is less uh, the researcher put under three topics. The first one is similar approach. Imitations to rebuild the copy and by copying the characteristic of the past. Uh, opposite approach to build by reflecting the character characteristic of the own era. And the third one is harmony, contrast, to build by using the characteristic of both the past and the own era today. But still, we find the descriptions from char charters or policy documents. Uh, we list the design, different design approaches, but which design approach has us to create a successful or appropriate design is a big question. How we will design? And what, what are our tools to measure the uh, building that is respectful or sensitive or the other descriptions that we mentioned before. We have visual design indicators that are tangible values, as all we know for our designs, form, size, and scale, proportion, rhythm, texture, color, material. And the, on the other hand, the intangible ones, Human perception, sense of place, memory, social values, spiritual values, and all the needs. When we meet need new in old, it could be in old, on, with, under, next to, and 
I will try uh, to put some examples about this. How we meet new designs? Generally, uh, one part of these new designs are extensions. Uh, we know that only restorations is not enough to conserve the historical area. Uh, reuse is another important topic. While we decide to reuse a building, sometimes the uh, building is not enough for new functions. That's, that's why extensions are important. And we meet new designs as extensions on historical buildings. Except this as an individual building, they could be uh, as infill buildings, corners, freestanding buildings, or high rises in historical environments. And additions also could be in different uh, way, like vertical, horizontal, on both uh, directions, or freestanding, underground, or as an architectural element. Now we can pass the examples uh, to understand what we mentioned until now. Vertical extensions, I put two examples here. Uh, and to try to answer the question, the terms that we discussed before, if they are respectful or sensitive or uh, they can have the ability to create sensitivity continuity in future. In the first picture, the Tate Modern Museum is one of the buildings that are uh, evaluated very successful uh, in historical environment as an extension. Here we can see just a simple uh, rectangular element as an ex vertical extension. When we evaluate it in color, texture, it is contrast with the historical, but it is compatible. This is the difficulty, how we will find the answer, what we shall do while we are designing in the historical uh, environment or as an extension to historical building. The second uh, one also, uh, it feels us like that this new a floor story is existing there. It is not an extension that added later. Uh, opposite to this uh, approach, we can see some extensions that you feel that they are existing there, uh, like a sculpture. Uh, this is another approach. We see the color as we discuss the uh, tangible values with which uh, criteria we can manage to form our new design. Color is one uh, criteria for our design. We feel that color, but in the first photograph, we can see the form that, are, that is borrowed from the environment. These verticals sometimes becomes higher and they, as it is described before, they start to speak louder. We feel them. We meet horizontal extensions next to the building. Uh, the scale, we can uh, compare the scale factor here. How we feel when the scale change when compared with the historical building. Another example, here we feel just color again uh, in form, texture, uh, solid weight proportions. It is a calm uh, surface next, standing next to the historical building. This is another approach in, uh, that we can discuss in solid meaning. In that example, we see a form borrowed from the historical uh, building and 
interpreted and used in a new way and reflect its own time. We frequently meet with white color in <coughs> historical environments. It's a neutral color uh, with the original color of the historical environment. It is used. Uh, here the form is different. The texture is different. Uh, but it is possible to evaluate this design as successful or compatible uh, or unsuccessful. In both direction, both horizontally and vertically, that uh, surrounds the building, uh, I put two examples. One is just uh, on the right hand, fill the surface, um, vertical and horizontal. The other one, with a forum, it's a, like an umbrella that uh, over the building. We can feel that it's not respectful, or we can feel that it is protecting the historical building. We mentioned about the arrogance approach that reflects its own uh, style, its own time. One of the designers that used this approach is Daniel Rubenstein. <coughs> he is evaluated like that. We see his own style here. Uh, as we mentioned before, this extension speaks louder than the historical one. But again, it is possible to evaluate it. It destroyed the historical building or it makes it to be valuable. The extensions could be next to the building without touching historical building, like Berlin Jewish Museum that Daniel Lubeskind uh, designed. Another freestanding extension that not touch to the historical building. Underground extensions is another uh, option <coughs> for us to design and sometimes evaluated as without risk. When you go underground, the meeting new with old is limited here. Uh, the site is important here for archaeological values, if it is possible to go underground or not. Here in that design, you just see holes, and all this courtyard-like area is used, is used for new extension functions. Or it is designed like a landscape, but under this uh, area there is uh, a huge new spaces. <coughs> Your pyramid is an extension, and it is an underground uh, extension, but because of the scale of old, the historical one, it, it's a very big extension, but when we compare old and new, in that big courtyard, it is small. This is just the uh, part to attempt the underground. All new exhibition areas are there. Uh, this design is after competition. First, it is not accepted and discussed very much, but now uh, the citizens used to it. Architectural elements uh, to cover courtyards, close them, and form new spaces uh, is something that designers use very much, very frequently, or to supply the needs to the building as a <coughs> staircase, elevator, ear. It could be extensions like that as architectural elements. For infill buildings, uh, the infill could be in scale uh, to fill the space and fit the uh, size of the next ones, height, uh, keep 
the height, keep the line uh, as in the two examples. Here, in the first example, as it is seen contrast, when we look closer, we can see that the designer reflects the texture of bricks with a new material. Uh, in the second one, the Dave Chipperfield design, the lines, the textures that, that is borrowed from the historical buildings are used in a simple way in and modern way. And both side heights try to uh, keep the line. In that infill from uh, Istanbul, it is also uh, like that, to fill the gap without changing the height or straight line and carrying some lines from historical in a modern way and material. But it's possible to change the scale like these two examples. Uh, they are in different countries but by using a natural color, white or black, and taking a opening and reflecting it on the historic new one is used here. They have similarities. Or just a color, as simple as possible. Uh, we can feel it, uh, as it is described in the approaches. It says us that it is new, but uh, it is as simple as possible because the environment, the identity is very important. It is possible not to keep street line and quiet, uh, like these examples, and it is explained by the designers that this is a respect not to be as high and uh, as standing at the same line with the historical one but they reflect their own time and they reveal them not like a building, like a sculpture. This infill sometimes could be at the end of a row uh, and we need them like corner buildings and they are very important in uh, cities. These two examples are They, they reflect their own time with new materials, but they have some textures that they borrowed from the historical buildings. For freestanding building, uh, I chose this example for, from Norman Foster in France. All environment is historical, uh, but one building is a temple, very powerful one, and here we can see in the site plan that the scale is like the environment, and the columns, the lines are uh, interpreted in a very contemporary way and reflected on the new design. This building is also evaluated as a successful building in literature. Again, with white color, with different form, uh, as a contrast with the historical buildings, but <coughs> some lines, the roofs of the uh, buildings, of historical buildings that are next to the new one, are reused here. But only the uh, close environment is not important here. We can see a very powerful church within this texture. Guggenheim Museum, we all know that building. Uh, it is also not touching to the historical area, but uh, in the streets of historical uh, city, we perceive this building. Uh, sometimes this is evaluated as a masterpiece or the designer uh, get bored and did design, create this design. But for, we can give this uh, as an example for distinguishable. 
to distinguish this uh, when we compare it with the historical one. But uh, if we change form, material, color, that is that means we are not respectful to the historical ones. This is a question that we can ask. These two examples are for when we change the scale with the environment. These two buildings are uh, within the texture in a very big scale. The forums, one, uh, the first one, computer center, continues this the rectangular forms, but the uh, metropole parasol is like an umbrella and creates a, a meeting area, open air uh, area for as a public area. Sometimes freestanding buildings, as in the Acropolis, New Acropolis Museum, all the environment is historical, but there is, again, a powerful one that it is not very close to the new building, but the designer uh, should take care for it. Uh, again, when we look close to the new building, we don't feel that it is uh, any relationship with Nicosia Fort uh, from south and north side. It wasn't a comparison of two sides, uh, but I want to put all the examples. They must be honest. They, they mustn't uh, pretend to be uh, old. John Ruskin's uh, description, philosophical approach to change, implies that the past can inspire the present, but the present must neither replicate nor alter the original architecture and humans of the I think the new designs have a healing uh, effect, a power to heal the destroyed environment. Like this uh, water drop uh, in a water that creates circles and heals uh, the environment. And the star architects with successful designs uh, can create this effect. Design could be, should be, or respectful, compatible, and distinguishable. These two words are opposite, compatible and dis distinguishable. We can create it like in that uh, photograph with color or same color with different form or different texture. It depends on the, the architect eye. The architect will follow his her own way to find appropriate design approach. Thank you. <laughs>